going beer fans welcome back to beer review today we're gonna be doing a quick one-on-one tutorial on the brand new 2023 bmw x1 this is your first time on this youtube channel beam review what we do here is showcase all the latest bmws we also do some really cool hidden tips and tricks so if that's something that you are into subscribe to this channel because we put out content every single week so for this video we're gonna be going over the brand new 23 x1 we're gonna walk around the whole entire vehicle and point out some of the things that you need to adjust and everything that you need to know about this vehicle so definitely stay tuned throughout the whole entire video also if you all were looking for some really cool bmw accessories definitely check out the links right down below we do have some really cool accessories that you should definitely check out especially if this is your first bmw especially if you just got a brand new x1 so definitely check out the links right down below also before we get started definitely make sure that you have your key fob so you can see some really cool features on the outside of this x1 so first off and foremost we have our door handle here obviously but there are a couple different features that this door handle can do if you don't already know now many now many of the newer vehicles they all have keyless the bmw of course has keyless too the sensor for that to lock it is going to be right over here so if you gently just touch that it will lock the vehicle and if you just simply grab it from the bottom of the door handle it will unlock the vehicle as well and then moving right along to the back right side of the x1 we're going to see a fuel pump door right over here now the fuel pump door will stay locked if the vehicle is locked but if you unlock the vehicle and simply just push on it as you can see the door the gas lid door just opened so i always make sure that i mention this but if you want to fill up gas simply undo this and simply place it right here so you don't scratch your beautiful paint also the gas here at least in the u.s is going to be middle or higher the absolute minimum is 89 and the recommended is 91 again both of those they fall middle or higher we're right here approaching the back of the vehicle now the door handle now the handle to unlock the trunk is going to be right beneath here top the left of this camera that's right here simply just pull on that and then the door will open all by itself and before we get inside there are a couple buttons up here the one on the left will actually close the trunk the one on the right will also close the trunk and lock the cars so you can walk away from it as well now over here many of the bmws they all have a privacy shade this x1 still has it as well you can remove this the way that you would do that is simply there is a little hook right over here that you would undo and that's how you can remove that privacy shade or cargo cover and then there are also hooks right beneath here too that you would simply just pull out this is the trunk obviously and there's nothing too too much going on one of the biggest things to mention though is the fact that right beneath here you do have additional space now this vehicle does have a spare obviously but many of the bmws they do still come with run flat tires if your vehicle did not come with the spare you're going to have a, a ton more space down here and also bmws they do come with four years of roadside assistance so definitely utilize that if you ever get into trouble on the side of the road now there is a way to fold down those rear seats and, and i will show you as soon as we get to the side of the vehicle the rear seats are completely foldable and there's tons of space back here too let's go ahead and close the trunk again the one on the left will close the trunk as you can see the trunk is closing and then going into the side of the vehicle now this seat is already down so i'm just gonna put this back up now this one's really crucial to know about the x1 all the previous x1s they also had this too but if you want to fold down these seats or even recline them just a little bit the strap for that is actually going to be way down here as you can see with this little strap right here normally people would think that there's a button way up here which is true for all the other bmw suvs but i'm not sure why the x1 has a little strap way down here that many people may not know about and that's what you would simply pull to fold down a seat as you can see i almost just got my hand chopped off there but i'm okay and also in case you were wondering if you had a baby seat there are baby seat latches right here and right here there's also two on the other side as well so definitely utilize that it makes life a lot more easy for those baby seats and also looking right down here there is no rear seat climate control but we do have two USB-C ports right over there. If you do need the link for that, I will link it right down below as well. And also going back to the middle of this rear seat, if we fold this down, you can see that there's cup holders here. And also this middle seat here also has this own little strap right here, which is really hard to see. But again, this is a crucial thing to mention. If you pull on that, the middle portion of the seat will fold down flat. So if you have some skis or long pieces of wood that you want to put into your X1, you could also do that. Along the door, there isn't too much going on except for the basics such as your door handle here and your window control right there. You also also have the cubby right here in case you had a water bottle which, which is really useful these days as well and now we're going to jump into the vehicle before we do i did want to show you all the seating controls that we have here there are a few different ways to use that now simply you can go front and back of course and this one right here you can also also recline forward and backward as well but some big ones to mention is that you can also push this from the bottom up and then you can also raise the seat or you could also push it from the top to the bottom 
and then you can lower the seat as well. And right down here too, we do, we do have our button for the trunk. There are two different ways that you can use that. Now, of course, if you push it down, it will undo the trunk. But let's just say, for example, if you want to close the trunk from sitting inside your vehicle, if you hold this up the whole time, it will actually close the trunk as well. So let me demonstrate that for you as well. So of course we have our trunk button right over here and I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so we can all see. But if, again, if I push that down, it will undo the trunk. And if I hold it up, it will close the trunk as well. But the catch is that you have to hold it up the whole time. So as you can see, my finger is still holding up that switch until the trunk fully closed. And now simply to go left, to the right of the vehicle we're simply going to go run through the buttons here but of course door handle lock and unlock and we have our seating assignment here now the way you set this up and before you even do make sure you set up your bmw id first i will show you how to do that but the bmw id and the my bmw app are the two first things that you must do in order simply do the my bmw app first and then the bmw id so that whenever you get to this part where you have to set up your seating you won't bump into any issues. But say for example, if you already have your ID set, if you already have your My BMW app set, all you would have to do is hit set and then one. And then you would hear a beep and that's how you know that the seating just got set and saved. And then going down to the lower portion of the door, we have some controls here as you can see. This top switch right here will simply just fold in the mirrors, both left and right will fold in. And, and then if I hit it again, it will simply undo the mirrors as well. BMW does have a function within the system where if you want to close your side mirrors whenever you lock the car, that is a setting that you can do as well. And I'm really glad that the new X1s have this, but BMW did change the design of how you can switch between the two mirrors here. Before it was pretty complicated, but now it's very, very simple. But quite simply, if you want to adjust your left mirror, simply put that on left or for the right, and then use this dial right here to simply go left and right and up and down. Window controls here, everything here is all automatic. And then this is the child lock for the windows right back here. There is a child lock for the door as well. If you look inside the door sill of the rear seat, you will see a switch right here. And now checking out the new lighting controls for the X1. These lighting controls are all brand new. Currently only the iX has similar lighting controls as this one, but I'm glad that BMW also redesigned their lighting controls here. And it's super, super simple now. So basically you always want to keep it in auto mode. But let's just say, for example, if you want to turn off your headlights, you would simply just hit off. And again, to turn that back on again, simply just leave it on auto and then set it and forget it. This button right here is quite new. So if we were to click on that, you will see a screen pop up right over here where it says lighting. Now this is where you would go now to have on your parking light. If you're, if you're not sure what the parking light is, if you're parked in a very dark spot, you could hit parking light on and then your rear lights will stay on. And so that way people will know that your car is parked there. Again, it's really great to use if you're parked in a very dark spot. So drivers, so oncoming traffic will know that you're parked there. And also one huge one I highly, highly recommend that you leave on is gonna be right here where it says automatic high beams. Now, what automatic high beams will do, if you don't already know, is that if that feature is on now, whenever you're driving at nighttime, if there's oncoming traffic coming, your high beams will turn off. And if it's pitch black again, your high beams will turn back on. It's super, super useful, especially if you live in areas where it gets very, very dark. But I would highly recommend having that on. There are two other menus that you could go in to go much more in depth. But honestly, the way that things are set up are quite good the way that they are. Right over here, we do have our turn indicator stock again. BMWs, they used to have a button right here called BC. Now they no longer have that. They did move the BC functions into this gear icon right over here, which we'll be going into in just a little bit. But yes, you can use this to turn on your blinkers. You can also pull it back towards you to turn on the high beams, or you can push it forward to leave the high beams on too at nighttime. BMW did decide to keep their cruise control stuff on one section of the steering wheel, but simply the on and off switch for cruise control is gonna be this guy right here. Once you have it on, simply go ahead and set the speed. You can adjust the speed with the plus and minus here, but tip on that, if you wanted to adjust in once, you would simply just push up and down. But if you wanted to adjust in increments of five miles per hour or kilometers, you would simply just push this up hard. As you can see, the button does have a second step to it as well. So by doing that, you can adjust your mile per hour in increments of five, if you do a hard push. Mode is gonna be right here. There are different types of modes of cruise control if your vehicle does have adaptive. And right over here, we do have our horn. This X1 does have a heated steering wheel as well. There used to be a button right down here, but now it's gonna be located in the climate menu, which we'll be going over in just a little bit. But the X1 steering wheel is quite nice. I am actually in love with it. And now going over here to the, to the right portion, of the X1s. And now going over here to the X1's multimedia controls on the steering wheel, there are lots of different ways that you can use this. 
so let's go ahead and get down to it so this is going to be your volume knob which is going to be the same volume knob as this guy right down here and we'll touch back up on the gear icon in, in just a little bit this left and right scrolling knob right here you can also use that to switch radio stations or switch tracks this new music note right here represents the mode button so if you click on that you can change your audio source now this x1 actually has a head-up display so you're not going to see it on this screen but, but as you can see the head-up display is going to be right over there and there's different modes that you can choose from whether you want fm radio apple carplay android auto if your vehicle does not have a head-up display if you hit that you're going to see that same menu pop up right here and also we do have our phone button here if i were to simply just hit it you would see your recent calls pop up either here or again if you have a head-up display you're gonna see that on your head-up display you will see your recent calls if you hit that if you're getting a phone call you can use that to pick up the phone call and if you want to hang up that same phone call you can also press that again to hang up the phone call as well now voice command for the new x1 is very very powerful if you don't already know the voice command can be used in so many different ways I do have a separate video on that too if you, if you needed to see it the two big ways that you can use voice command is say for example if you're connected to apple carplay or android auto if you hold that down you would get google assistant or siri to pop up on the screen the other way to use it is if you do a quick press you would get the bmw voice command to control features of the vehicle you can do some really cool things with the bmw voice command now such as such as controlling the temperature you can also use bmw's voice command to change the lighting you can also use bmw's voice command to change the ambient lighting within the vehicle as well and you can also do some really cool things such as this <laughs> lower the passenger side window okay i will open the front passenger window as you can see i just told voice command to open the passenger side window and it just did it but you can't do that to close it because of safety of course and now to go back into it this gear icon again is new for bmws but there's tons of different things that you can control with that so i just hit the gear icon and now i'm seeing content layout and head up display right here all that this simply means is that you can change all the different displays within this new iDrive 8 instrument cluster. Again, inside content, you can see some pretty cool things such as your total miles. If I click on the next one, you'll see a compass, which will also show your routes if you're using the BMW navigation. And then to keep going down, you can also see this guy right here is gonna be your G meter to measure your G forces. And my favorite one is gonna be this last one right here, which is gonna be your active audio source. If you have it set to that, whatever music is playing, you're gonna see in the middle of the screen right here. Also hitting the gear icon again, we're gonna check out layout and now I'm just using this scrolling up right here to go right. And if I push down on it, we can choose all the different layouts that this BMW X1 has. This one is a really sporty one. And this one right here is gonna be a standard. Go down one more too, it's gonna be a nice simple view. And those are the three that this X1 has. And lastly, if you go over to head up display, there's different ways that you can set up your head up display. For this X1, we simply have our standard view. And if you go down one more, it will show a really cool sport view as well. And now to scoot over to the wipers of the vehicle, we do have our windshield wipers here. The biggest thing you need to know about this is that if you hit it up one notch, it goes into its auto mode and then the green light will turn on too. So now it is in its rain sensing mode. And then this scrolling knob right here, you can actually use to adjust the sensitivity for your wipers as well. I typically like to keep, on, keep mine on fast because I do like to keep my windshield nice and clean at all times. And right over here, we do have our rear wiper again that it is off right now but if you give it a little twist it will go into its on position and if you twist it even further it will actually shoot out fluid right back here to clean your, your rear view glass as well too and now also just to touch up on the screen i do apologize for the sunlight it is quite bright out today basically if you look at this lower left side right here where it says 437 that is how many miles you can drive before you have to fill up your gas again right down here we have the time and over here going from 0 to 160 is obviously gonna, gonna be your speed again this middle portion you can adjust to whatever you want using the gear icon as mentioned back here this shows which gear you're in and this right here is actually your power meter now before we used to have a gauge that measured rpm but all the newer BMWs and all the newer vehicles as well, they're all switching over to a power meter. So quite simply, this is gonna be 0%. And then if you're on the gas, it will adjust to whatever you are going to. Quite simply, this power meter just gives you an, a readout in terms of percentages on how much power you're using within the vehicle. Right down here, we do have our oil gauge. And right down here, we have our temperature meter as well. And this, this right here displays the temperature on the outside of the vehicle. And this 35 degrees that we have here simply 
basically states the temperature on the outside. Now we'll come back to iDrive 8 in just a few, but let's go ahead and just finish up the rest of the buttons that we have going on here. All climate control buttons are gonna be inside here. And again, we will come back to that. But this scrolling up right here simply opens and closes this giant vent that we have now. You can use this knob right here to go up and down left and right to adjust the vent. And the only climate control buttons that BMW has is gonna be your two defrosters right here and here. The top one for the front, and this bottom one for the back. And now we have this brand new tray or phone holder, whatever you wanna call it. It is completely redesigned. Some BMWs, they have a wireless charger. Now, one great way to tell if your vehicle has a wireless charger or not, the best way is to simply look at your window sticker first. But a great way to tell is that right in the middle of this little phone icon that we have here, you would see a battery cell there. You would also see another cutout within the tray here that would emit a blue light whenever your wireless charger is on. But this vehicle simply does not have it, as you can see, because there is no battery cell here. So I can immediately tell that this, that this X1 does not have it. And the X1s are also starting to now come with the famous BMW digital key card. Now what this key card can do is some pretty cool things. So essentially, this key card card works as your third key if I can get this thing off this key card can actually work as your third key so there's a few different ways that you can use it if you were to tap and hold on on your door handle you can actually lock and unlock the vehicle and if you take it and then place it right down here in the middle you can actually start your vehicle and then take off with just a little key card Again, whenever you do get your brand new X1, you do have to activate the key card first. So definitely make sure you set up your BMW ID first and then activate your digital key card. The only catch with this guy is that it does come with a one year trial. So again, BMW does love their subscriptions, but definitely use this whenever you're going hiking, biking, or swimming, and then you don't have to take your real key fobs and save a lot more space. Keep this inside your wallet or your purse. Do not leave it inside the car or else somebody could potentially take off with your vehicle, which you definitely don't want. Right down here, we got some cool cup holders. And right down here as well, the standard USB is completely gone now. And all the newer BMWs, they're all starting to come with USB-C ports. There's two here. There's all. There were also two in the back that we mentioned before. Quite the benefit of the new USB-C ports is the fact that it'll charge your phone three times faster moving right down here we do have some additional cubby space and now we're gonna go over right here to the center console it is all brand new it does quite look similar to the new ix there are a lot of changes going on here so let's go ahead and get into it of course we do have our start and stop button right here and this new gear shifter or, or gear lever whatever you want to call it is going to be the new way to shift your gears now as you can see i have my foot on the brake and now i, I can freely adjust this Right now it's in park, as you can see from the red P that's right there. If I go up, it goes into reverse. The green light also is placed right beside the R now, letting me know that I'm in reverse. If I push it one notch down softly, it goes into neutral. And again, if I was in reverse and if I want to immediately go into drive, do a hard push down and then that will go into drive. There is a new L mode right here, which simply just stands for low gear. If you push it down one more time while you're in drive, then it'll go into the low gear. Also, before I forget, I, I wanted to show you all a really cool trick. If you don't al already know from BNB shifters, is that if your vehicle was in drive or even in reverse too, if you want to put your vehicle in park, there's another way to do it without hitting this guy. So let's just say, for example, you arrived in your driveway, and then now you want to get out your vehicle. You do not have to go from hitting this to the off button. Simply, all you have to do is just hit the off button. And then as you can see, the vehicle immediately goes into park. It's very, very useful. Definitely get used to doing it that way. It does save you a step from going here and then there. Simply just hit the off button. The vehicle will go from drive to park. Now this X1 does have the full surround view. If I click on this, it brings up the full surround view. If your vehicle does not, if your X1 does not have the surround view, then you're just gonna get a display that shows parking sensors in the front and in the back. But this vehicle does have a, the surround view, which does some really cool things, such as being able to park itself, which as you can see, it is searching for a spot right now. The way that that works, I do have a video separately for that too. Quite simply, all you would have to do is just drive past the empty spot first so the vehicle can scan it. And then you would hear a beep and then you would see a P pop up somewhere on the screen. Simply just hit that P and then the vehicle will just do the rest. There are a couple other modes here, but for the most part, you're not gonna need to worry about them too, too much. And then going back to the center console that we have, we have all, we also have this new button right here called My Modes. Now, previously, BMWs, they used to have our sport mode, comfort mode, and eco pro mode. Now it's simply all in My Modes. And again, you can tell, and also you can also tell a voice command to switch your modes too. So you don't have to go clicking down here and then doing it. You can simply just tell voice command to go into sport mode and then, and then it will do it. But if I hit my modes, you can see that, that these are the modes. Personal, per, the personal mode is the same thing as comfort mode. And again, we do have our sport. We do have our efficient mode. 
and Expressive is all brand new here. Expressive will simply change the mood within the vehicle, it will change the ambient lighting, and it's quite a really nice bell and whistle. And then now we do have this new middle button right over here, which simply goes into your driving settings. Before BMWs had this green button right here called Intelligent Safety, that button has also been shifted into this driving setting buttons. But if I were to hit that, you would see a new screen pop up here. You would see your driver's assistance functions. I personally do not like lane departure because I do not like the car correcting me and whatnot. So I have, so I usually keep that off. Driving assistance is, is again the new intelligent safety. Again, the vehicle does have things like collision warning, lane departure, which I just turned off. And then if I keep going down, there's even more safety features all along here that you can adjust freely. The newer BMWs, they have this really cool thing called iconic sounds. Now the vehicle, whenever you're pushing it really hard, will make these really cool electric sounds. I do love the way that they sound, so I just leave this the way that it is. And also, if you remember, BMWs also used to come with the auto start stop button. Well, now that is also inside here too. And as you can see, the auto start sub button is going to be located right here. You can deactivate it once, but whenever you get back into your vehicle the next time, it will activate again. If you are somebody that likes to have your auto start stop off at all times and you, do, and you don't want to keep hitting buttons to get to this screen, one thing that you could do, and this is also good for any menu within the screen, is that if you hold this down, you can actually add that to your shortcuts. And then as you can see, there's a new shortcuts menu right over here. And then if you want to get back into your shortcuts menu, simply swipe down from the top of the screen and then your shortcut is gonna be right there. Drive off support is very new. It's also great to use if you're in inclement conditions, such as snow or ice. If you have this on, the vehicle will provide you a drive off support, which simply will help you drive off much more easy. So again, all those driving settings were inside this button right here. It's called the driving settings button. Auto H is back again. If you don't know what Auto H does, it stands for Auto Hold. If you have this feature on, there will be a green light that emits right here. And then you only have to hit it once. And then once that feature is on, you can actually come to a stop and then take your foot off the brake. So then the vehicle will still hold in place. It is super, super useful to use if you're in stop and go traffic or driving through the city where there might be long, long red lights. So you don't have to keep your foot on the brake at all times. I usually love to use it whenever I'm going through a drive through And now we have our new volume knob, which used to be right there, but now they moved it to the center console. I personally love it here because now I can just rest my hand and just adjust the volume as needed. But yes, you can do volume up, volume down. You can also push this in to mute whatever is playing as well we have our hazards which also moved as well and right down here we have the new way to skip tracks or go back to a previous track right down here and then moving right up here too we do have our garage door opener again i also have another video on this so definitely check that out we do have our button right here for the sunroof and this one will, will also control the shade as well as you can see the glass is open and the shade is all the way back but let me show you how to do it from the get-go so let's just say for example you wanted to open up the glass and the shade again this button controls both the shade and the glass if i push it back one time and and if you do a hard push it will do it all by itself it will open up the shade and then once the shade is all the way back you can now push it the same way once more and then it will open up the glass also if the glass was closed and if you want to do a tilt there is a way to do that too and you might not catch this off the bat but simply for that you would push from the bottom going up top just to push inward and then that will do a nice little tilt there too. And if you want to close the tilt, same way again, push it from the bottom to the top and that will close that tilt. Over here, we do have the SOS button. Again, BMWs, they do come with free included four years of roadside assistance. So definitely use that if you ever bump into trouble. And also let's just say, for example, you want to adjust the dimness within the screens here. There is a brand new button right over here, which is really hard to see, but this does bring up the lighting menu or interior lighting. If you, if you hit that button, you're gonna see a screen that looks like this. In the previous BMWs, there used to be a scrolling knob right down here, which, which you can use to adjust your display screens. Now you can just do it right from here where it says cockpit brightness at nighttime. Again, you're not gonna see it adjust the brightness right now because it's broad daylight, but that's what you'd use to dim down your screen at nighttime. Also, the new X1 does come with tons and tons of ambient lighting colors. So if you were to click on that and then go into colors, you can see all these different beautiful colors that this X1 has. Again, all the new BMWs with iDrive 8, they all have those really cool color choices. And right here, there are different ways that you can adjust your reading light. But going back up to the reading light, physical buttons are still there for that. They are touch sensitive now, so you, all you would have to do is touch them. And then that will turn on the reading light. There's also one right here in the middle too, which will turn on all the lights in the vehicle. Also, there is a way that you can open this and it's really, really hard. And you may not catch this right off the bat, but you would just try to simply just pull on this 
to get it to open. That is not the way to do it. And I do wish that BMW did in include a little picture on how to do this because many will not get this right off the bat. If you wanted to open this, there is a way to do it. The button for that is gonna be this little guy right here. Push this down. And then once you push that down, that's how you would open up this guy, which gives you just a bit more additional space. Not a whole lot going on here in terms of space, but again, you do have all that space right down here too, right below it. So definitely use that if you have to. And now let's go ahead and get into iDrive 8. And before we deep dive into the system, let's just touch up on the climate control menu. So again, no buttons for climate control now. They're all gonna be right here. You can use voice command to adjust whichever parameters, whichever setting within the climate control as well. You can tell it to turn on your heated steering wheel. You can tell it to turn off your heated seats. You can have it set to a desired temperature, such as set temperature to 75 degrees and then it'll do it. But some major things to mention about climate control is that my advice would be to simply make sure that this automatic program is on. If you have that on, then all you would simply have to do is, just, is adjust your temperatures here and here. And, and then by doing that, you wouldn't have to go into here and adjust all the different parameters all by yourself. Simply just leave it on auto or automatic program and then just adjust your temperature accordingly, just like you would do your house. If you wanted to turn off your climate control, you just hit the switch right here. You can also tell voice command to deactivate climate control too. And also if you wanted these two temperatures to sync, you can also do that as well. There is a button right up here. And then now, as you can see, if I move this one, it'll just move both of them as well. So that's how you'd use climate control. Again, just to go into it, this guy right here would adjust your, your setting for your heated steering wheel. This right here is gonna be for your heated seats. This is gonna be your fan speed. And this is gonna be where the where the airflow would blow out from, whether you want it from the top, the middle, or the bottom. Parameter on the very right side, that is gonna be the heated seat for the past. And again, if you were wondering where the defrosters were, just to remind you, those two buttons are our physical buttons right down here. So that's how you would use your climate control. Again, simply just leave it on auto and adjust your temperature accordingly. The car will just do it all by itself. If you're in a situation where the temperature is really cold out and you have it set to your 74 degrees and you notice that there's no heat blowing, Simply the reason why that is happening is because the vehicle needs time to heat up first before it can blow hot air. So at all costs, just make sure you leave it on auto and just let the car do its thing. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna be the new iDrive 8, the new operating system for BMWs before BMWs always had a controller here. This X1 does not have it. So you're gonna to have to rely on your touch, but even more importantly, use voice command to do whatever you need to do within the vehicle. It's super, super powerful. You can also tell voice command to get you into whichever setting within the vehicle as well. You can tell voice command to go into it. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So this is gonna be our home screen. If you hit the home button up top that was just there, it will bring you back into the home screen. If you ever get lost, just hit that home button and then you will get back to the screen here. Going from the left to the right. Now on the left, going from top to bottom, if I hit this window pane right here, it brings up all the different menus within iDrive 8 and within your BMW. There's tons and tons of stuff going on here. If you wanted to go in depth with that, I also have a video for that as well. But simply that window pane would take you into that menu that showed all the icons. This musical note right here, if you go into that, you have the selection of whether you want Sirius, FM radio, or AM radio. Also, if you're connected to the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, that will also show up here too as well. If you hit this phone button, this is where you would go to set up your phone or connect additional devices. And right down here we do have, and right down here we have our navigation button, which brings up our BMW navigation. And once you have your iPhone or Android connected, you're gonna see a fifth one that pops up here too, which takes you into Apple CarPlay. But as you can see, this home screen does have all these widgets now, and they are from top to bottom. And one of the biggest things to mention about this is that you can customize this to whatever you want. There's also ways that you can add more widgets too, if you swipe all the way to the right. You can see that there's a button here called add widgets and then you can add even more widgets to whatever you were already seeing again you can customize this to whatever you like for the most part my phone usually just stays in apple carplay so i personally do not even worry about these widgets all that much and that ladies and gentlemen quite wraps it up for this x1 if you did have any questions about the vehicle write it down below i respond back to every single comment so feel free to ask whatever questions you have about the vehicle there is tons and tons more about the x1 i am building a x1 course as we speak Speak. and if you wanted to know when that was all set let me know as well subscribe to this channel we'll be putting out tons more content of the bmw x1 and even more on the iDrive 8 so take care and have a great day